First off, I'm going to add a title to the spreadsheet. You should always have some type of identification on the spreadsheet at the top. However, there are two ways of thinking of a header in Excel. One way to look at it is from a printing perspective. If you want your data portion here to be clear of any extra header related text and just want the header to be visible on a printed copy, click up here on View. See how Normal is currently selected? Change this to Page Layout and you'll see how your page now shows you a header area. You can add different things to the left, center, and right areas of the header. Let's take a look at some of the pre-made options available to us up in the Header Footer Design tab. Here under the header, there are a bunch of pre-made choices. If you want a little more control, most of these choices are out here on the ribbon. Let's add the sheet name to the left and page one of one here on the right. You can also add some custom text anywhere you want. Like here in the middle, let's add Ken's awesome title. Notice that you have all the same options on the page footer. If you want to see what this will look like when you're printing, go back out to the page layout on the main ribbon and click on this little More icon. Here are a lot of the same options with a Print Preview button. Ta-da! Let's now look at the header from a non-printing or visible on the screen perspective. The first thing that I'm going to do is add the header above everything else. It turns out that we don't have any room, so I'm going to add one row above this first row. We can do that by clicking the row number and then right clicking on it and clicking on the insert. This will create a new row. Now I can type in the sheet title into this cell. If I want that title to appear above and be aligned with all of the columns of data, I'll have to merge all of these five cells into one large cell. You can easily do this by clicking on the Merge and Center button. This button will take all those five cells and merge them into one and then center the data in the middle of this new large cell. If you want to, you can also unmerge the cells by doing this. Okay, let's put it back into Merge to make it look good. If you scroll down a bit, you'll notice that this total of 36 is not quite correct. By the appearance of things, it looks like the math on this cell is somehow broken. If you visually add up the values displayed in these cells, they add up to 34, but this formula is somehow calculating the number of 36. The problem here is that even when I look at the formula in the cell, which I can reveal by double clicking on it, or clicking once on it and then clicking up here in the formula bar above, you can see that's adding up the values in these four cells. Well, that looks right. So the problem's not in the formula itself. If you select all of these cells that you want to add up, take a look down here and show you some of the values that Excel 2013 calculates for you just in case you want to refer to them. See here we have the average count the sum of these four cells, and even this formula thinks that the answer is 36. The problem is what we're looking at in these four cells. The formatting of these cells is screwed up so that it doesn't reveal the entire number contained in the cell in the first place. This cell is formatted to show nothing to the right of the decimal place, but if we look up in our formula bar, the actual number is 2.235. We can keep on going and hopefully notice what's happening here. The formula is correctly adding up these incorrectly formatted numbers. So what do we do to fix this? A very short and quick and easy way to figure out what's in each cell and not just what we are seeing is to use the shortcut Control plus Shift plus the tilde key. The tilde key is next to the number one on the keyboard. First, select all the cells on the page by clicking and dragging over the cells or by clicking in the upper left corner, or if you're in the keyboard shortcuts like me, 
clicking on the control plus the A key. Now hold down the control, then shift, and then finally the tilde key. This reveals the entire numbers as they actually exist in the cell, not just how it's rendered after all of the custom formatting. To revert these cells to their previous formatting, you can just hit undo or hit control plus the letter Z, which is the keyboard shortcut for undo. To correct this error, I'm going to add to the precision of the display of these cells. I'm going to change the format by using the accounting format, which gives us two decimal places. If I didn't want to do that, let me hit the control Z key to undo it. I can increase the decimal places and reveal more of the underlying data. Since these values are actually money, I'll use the accounting format and remove the dollar signs from all but the first row of the total lines. Finally, before we finish this segment, you'll notice that in these cells, some of the words are being cut off. We can just auto-adjust the width of this cell in order to reveal the words, but sometimes this causes the resulting column to be really wide, or at least wider than we can tolerate. What if we wanted to keep the column width the same in order for it to print out on a printer in a decent looking manner? We can do this by clicking on this very handy button on the home ribbon called Wrap Text. By wrapping this text, it'll take all of this text and make the row height large enough to reveal all the text in the cell. You can also do this by highlighting all the cells that you want wrapped, right clicking the mouse, selecting Format Cells, clicking on the Alignment tab, and then clicking on the Wrap Text checkbox. Another possibility that works is to double click on the area between the row numbers and the left side of the page. This completes Level 1 of this lesson. See you shortly for Level 2.